Hey guys, what up? Welcome back. And um, what we're going to pick up, we're going to start moving a little bit quicker in this tutorial series. I feel like I've already covered all the basics of uh, 3.5 and now we're ready to really start you know, getting into some you know, how do we build programs type of thing. So I've also changed my editor. I'm not, I'm not using Atom anymore. Um, personally, I just I hate jumping around between the editors. You guys can use whatever editor you want. Um, a few of you have commented on why do I you know, use Atom and then run Python from the command line and I can install some tool to get Atom to run for me and it just for me it was just more of a headache than I, than I felt like dealing with just because I, I'm already used to one editor and I'm already in one particular editor all the time so um, just because I'm using this particular editor here uh, which is Visual Studio doesn't mean you guys have to use it um, there is a community version that is free if you want to use it um, I, I definitely like it but it's not a requirement at all so you can continue to use Atom or Notepad++ or even uh, Notepad if you wanted to I, I don't care but uh, with this editor I'm going to be able to run the program directly from uh, the editor itself and it'll uh, evaluate here so it's simple print hello world and I changed the font green let me know if you guys hate that font I was trying to get it to stand out a little bit because I can't really make the font any bigger than this and um, I'm not sure how small that's going to appear when you guys are viewing this on YouTube. So if it's too small uh, or if you can't stand the color, just let me know and I'll try to get that changed. Um, so where where I want to actually discuss uh, what we're going to do next here is um, we're, we're going to look at uh, Python has a bunch of built-in libraries and things like that, right? And, and the libraries that Python has, like you have like date time, right? So if you wanted to use um, actual dates, um, you would actually need to use the date time library. So what you have to do in Python is you have to actually do something called an import. And Python makes you explicitly state what you want to import. So what this means is that I need to actually explicitly state what part of the date time library I'm looking for. See, date time in Python has like all these different methods attached to it. Um, and, and what's interesting is the date time module um, has a, a date time uh, object that you're going to be using um, to actually get the current date. So what I mean by that is you have to actually stay say from date time import date time because this date time is actually attached to this date time object which is weird. So if I wanted to print out today's current date then I would say um, date time which I'm actually using this particular date time uh, that I've imported from this library and then I would say dot now which is a method uh, attached to that and that'll actually print out the day and time and seconds um, and it's not the prettiest format but you get like you know all these milliseconds and everything so it's it's very very um, accurate so that is actually how you um, import a, an actual uh, object that you're going to be using so this in, this video isn't about how do we learn all the different stuff about daytime um, there's a lot of documentation on how to use daytime and um, I can actually just show it to you guys here. Um, there's daytime is going to be one of the more confusing things that you're going to deal with as a Python developer, uh, at least starting out. So, like you'll see, like from time delta. Well, what the hell does that mean? So, if you're counting out like specific days and stuff, then time delta uh, becomes really important, especially when you know Saturdays fall on different days of the week. So, I mean, different months have different amounts of days in them, and different countries are even different. Um, you know, as far as what their calendars are and you know t time um, uh, daylight savings hours and all that stuff like time is a complicated thing in every single language um, and it's no no exception uh, to Python so once again this isn't about what is a daytime object this is strictly just about okay there's a library out there that we need to use how do we import it so that is actually what we just did we imported the daytime um, object that we needed from the daytime library and we made use of that um, so that being said, let's go ahead and get rid of uh, what we have here. We want to actually build a real program um, just as an example. It's going to be somewhat of like a scraper type program and it's going to use a, uh, a library out there which is really important for scraping in today's um, day and age with browsers and stuff. So um, it's going to be called uh, Selenium. So we need to pull up a command line so that we can access our Python installation. And you should have Python installed from previous videos if you're following along. If not, just type Python. Just make sure you have it on your machine. And you can see that Python 3.5 is my default version. So when I say pip install, 
Um, pip install is actually installed for you by default with Python 3.5. You used to have to install it in previous versions, but 3.5 and 3.4, I believe, actually come with it now, so you don't have to install it anymore. So just simply saying pip install and then whatever sort of module you're trying to install, which in our case is Selenium, just press enter and it's going to go through the process. It'll, it'll reach across the web and it's going to download Selenium and install it onto your machine. Um, that way Python can then use it. Now, in my particular case, I already had it installed, but you're going to see something where it actually like grabs a lot more stuff and displays a lot more data. So let's go ahead and figure out, then go back to our, our program here, and we're going to uh, make use of this new Selenium thing that we just installed. So we're going to use a piece of the Selenium library that we just installed, and it's going to be called WebDriver. So just like we did with Daytime, we're going to say, from Selenium, import WebDriver. In WebDriver, um, we're going to actually assign it as a variable. So we'll create a, a driver variable, and we're going to say it equals the WebDriver that we just installed. But then we're going to use something that the WebDriver has attached to it, which is called, and did I spell this right? Yeah, that is spelled right. What, what the hell is it complaining about? Yeah, it shouldn't be complaining there. Um, anyway, so we're going to say Firefox, okay? Um, so we're going to use the Firefox. Now let's go ahead and give it a URL that we want to request. So we're going to get, and I'm going to grab my uh, YouTube channel as an example. So inside of these uh, double quotes, we'll go ahead and print the actual URL. So it's a full spelled out URL where we want to go um, to get the page. And then that's it. So let's go ahead and execute this program. So the reason why this actually isn't ru running is because I don't have um, Visual Studio pointed to the right version of Python. It's actually looking for 3.4 instead of 3.5, so let me just fix that real quick. Hey guys, sorry about the delay. Um, so Visual, Visual Studio, the version I was using, was not working with the latest and greatest from Python, so I had to um, get that updated, so now it's working, so this will look a little bit differently again. But um, when we go ahead and we run this program, you see I don't have any import errors now since I'm referencing the right version of Python. Um, God damn it, what is this? Oh, it's being used by another process. That sucks. One second. All right, so that ran that time. That It's because um, I was just testing it out, and it actually ran, and my Firefox version was actually still running, so we had two conflicting versions. Uh, but you can see what happened here is we have... Um, the program ran successfully and Selenium was used to actually pull up a Firefox browser and then navigate to this page um, based on the URL. So uh, if I wanted to go ahead and like click a button or something like that, um, let me see something here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, right click and I'm going to inspect element on this uh, why you should learn Python programming and we're going to go ahead and look at really just this anchor tag and if I go ahead and right click and I say um, copy xpath I can go back over to my program and I can say driver dot find element uh, by xpath and now you can see that the IntelliSense is working which is nice so this is a big xpath I've noticed that big xpaths uh, sometimes don't work and I want to do single quotes since this is a double quote here otherwise I'd have to escape those double quotes and I don't like doing that so I'm just gonna um, keep those as single quotes and that, that problem will go away. Let me zoom out just a little bit. So that that um, that might be a little bit too long but let's go ahead and see what happens here. So that's exactly what happened here. We had this thing. This thing just uh, tripped up on this humongous um, X path. So let's do something a little bit more simple. Um, and th this is actually not the easiest site um, to automate and scrape, which um, is probably one of the reasons why we're also having an issue here. Uh, let's see. So if I just back all that out here, what I can do is um, this is an XPath language, which actually takes a little bit of time to um, get the hang of, but it's basically just a way of expressing things that, that can drill down and, and find a particular element that you're looking for in an HTML page. 
So like this star means match any element. This A means match an anchor. Um, so that is a simple link. And then I'm putting in square bra brackets a um, argument that says that it should contain certain text. So that the actual anchor text itself should contain um, like why you should learn Python programming, which is the name of the title of that first video that I'm trying to click. And that needs to be like that. All right, and then on the uh, end here, what we're going to do is also fire another method that says click. So what we're telling this um, Selenium to do is we're saying get this web page and then read the web page. Inside that web page, find an actual uh, DOM element, which means document object model in um, HTML. It just basically means give me a section of the, the page that matches this and then click it, which is going to be an anchor tag. So it should pull up the new video. Um, or that first video that that shows up on the channel. So when we go ahead and run this again, um, you'll see that it'll pull up the channel and then click on that first video. And there you go. So you can see that it went ahead and requested the page and then went to the first channel. So if I wanted to build like an automated program or something like that. I could build something that automatically uploads or you know likes something. It has to be signed in, obviously, but um, you know I could even build something that sends an automatic comment, which I wouldn't suggest since it's you know spamming and bots are easily detected nowadays. But um, you know, you can automate all kinds of uh, you know useful tasks that you always have to do manually um, using something like Python 3.5 and Selenium. So I'm not going to get too much into that because that's kind of its own video and I actually have a lot of videos if you guys are interested on that subject as far as using Python and Selenium. Um, the times haven't changed that much in regards to how that's done so you can look at some of the older videos I have which use like Python 2.7 um, and you can apply those same principles to Python 3.5. So that's about it guys. I, I appreciate um, you guys watching. Thanks for uh, subscribing if you did and if you didn't please subscribe and I always appreciate that. So have a good day guys. Bye.